lift my voice and sing. I sing praises to my holy God. I sing praises to the King. This is Audrey. I'm so glad you're here today. There's a lot happening this week, so make sure you know what's going on. This Wednesday, kids will have Wacky Silly Wednesday at 6 p.m. At the same time, Pastor Derek is teaching spiritual warfare in the fellowship hall for adults. Make plans to be here at this Wednesday at 6 p.m. Also this Wednesday, the worship choir starts rehearsing again. If you ever wanted to join the choir, this is the time to do it. We'll meet at 7 p.m. in the choir room and we'll love to see you there. Camp Airborne starts next Sunday evening. July 10th to the 13th is going to be a fun time to see who Jesus is. Each night, we'll start dinner at 5.30. You can still sign up and register at CampAirborne.com. All rising 6th graders are invited to the Almost Youth Party. Join Roger on July 17th in the Annex at 4 o'clock. This is your chance to get familiar with the Annex, so make plans to be there. On July 24th, we will have the State of the SBC. Join us at 5 o'clock in the Fellowship Hall. Pastor Derek and Pastor Jason are going to teach you about the SBC meeting. God is doing some incredible things and they can't wait to share it with you. Finally, we are having a marriage retreat. The retreat is um, September 23rd and 24th in Blue Ridge, Georgia. We will have Counselor Judy Hawley as our guest speaker. The cost is $2.79 for per couple. That includes your room, the breakfast on Saturday, and conference materials. There's only room for 25 couples, so sign up quick. We would love to see you at all of these events. Remember how vital community is in our growth in Christ. We are so glad you are here today. Take a, a minute to pray and to meet with God before we meet with God. Take a minute to pray and get ready to meet with God.
everyone, I'm Merritt. This is Audrey. I'm so glad you're here today. There's a lot happening this week, so make sure you know what's going on. This Wednesday, kids will have Wacky Silly Wednesday at 6 p.m. At the same time, Pastor Derek is teaching spiritual warfare in the fellowship hall for adults. Make plans to be here at this Wednesday at 6 p.m. Also this Wednesday, the worship choir starts rehearsing again. If you ever wanted to join the choir, this is the time to do it. We'll meet at 7 p.m. in the choir room and we'll love to see you there. Camp Airborne starts next Sunday evening. July 10th to the 13th is going to be a fun time to see who Jesus is. Each night, we'll start dinner at 5.30. You can still sign up and register at CampAirborne.com. All rising sixth graders are invited to the Almost Youth Party. Join Roger on July 17th in the Annex at 4 o'clock. This is your chance to get familiar with the Annex, so make plans to be there. On July 24th, we will have the State of the SBC. Join us at 5 o'clock in the Fellowship Hall. Pastor Derek and Pastor Jason are going to teach you about the SBC meeting. God is doing some incredible things and they can't wait to share it with you. Finally, we are having a marriage retreat. The retreat is um, September 23rd and 24th in Blue Ridge, Georgia. We will have counselor Judy Holly as our guest speaker. The cost is $2.79 for per couple. That includes your room, the breakfast on Saturday, and conference materials. There's only room for 25 couples, so sign up quick. We would love to see you at all of these events. Remember how vital community is in our growth in Christ. We are so glad you're here today. Take a, a minute to pray and to meet with God before we meet with God. Take a minute to pray and get ready to meet with God. And he's touching me. Welcome to worship. We're so glad that you're here. Let's stand to our feet. Our God is good. We are here to worship him today, and we find power in him. Amen? Amen. Oh, come on now, folks. We just had this, thank you. We just had this incredible countdown. There's power in the name of Jesus, and we worship him today. Amen? Amen. Amen. There we go. Let's worship together. Would you be free from your burden? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you all evil the victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. Sing it out now. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood. Precious blood. 
There is power in the blood. We celebrate that today. Let's continue to worship this morning. We have a God that we can trust in. We can stand in his love today. Let's sing these words together. When darkness tries to roll over my bones When sorrow comes to steal the joy I own when brokenness and pain is all I know, I won't be shaken. I won't be shaken. Sing this out. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. Shame has no hold on us. Let's sing this together. Shame no longer has a place to hide. I am not a captive to the Afraid to leave my past behind, I won't be shaken. I won't be shaken. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in. power that can break off every chain. This power that can empty out a grave. This resurrection power that can save. This power in your name. Power in your name. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love my fear doesn't stand a chance when i stand in your love my fear doesn't stand a chance when i stand in your love my fear see that my fear doesn't stand a chance when i stand in your love my fear Stand a chance when I stand in your love, my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. Amen. Hey, we believe that today, right? Our God is there for us, and we trust in him. I'm going to ask you to have a seat for just a moment and direct your attention to the screens. Freedom. <laughs> the power to determine our actions without restraint. Freedom is surveying all the options and deciding which one is best for you. Freedom is sleeping soundly every night while courageous men and women are awake and protecting us. 
Freedom is the ability to worship God whenever, wherever. Freedom is dreaming. Freedom is creating. Freedom is loving. Freedom is expressing any disagreement with any political party. Freedom is launching a business in the middle of fear and uncertainty. But the highest freedom we can ever receive was purchased on our behalf on a hill outside of Jerusalem. As Jesus freely offered himself for us, our shackles were broken and our chains were removed. His death became our life. His shame became our glory. And we've been set free to live, to love, and to serve people with clear and open hearts. So today we celebrate and we praise God for granting us this undeserved gift that invites us to become truly and completely free. Aren't you thankful for freedom? Amen? Yeah, well, today is 4th of July. We're so, oh, tomorrow is, but, you know, we're celebrating the freedoms that we have as a nation. The freedom to be here in this moment. The freedom to be in this room worshiping a Savior is a unique gift. Not all Christians have the opportunity to have. And because men and women lay down their lives every day and some paid the ultimate price, we are free to freely worship our Savior, to freely worship our Lord. And that's something to celebrate. We're going to do that today. We're going to celebrate and worship Jesus because he's the one who's worthy and who has ultimately bought our freedom from eternal condemnation. I'm excited about that. I hope you are too. And we're going to celebrate in just a moment. We're going to pray in just a moment because this country that we have so many freedoms in certainly needs our prayer. Don't you agree? And uh, so that uh, we can pray that our future generations have the same freedoms. We need to pray hard, not just today, but in the days to come as well. So we're going to do that in just a moment. I want to welcome our guests today. If you're here and you're a guest of ours, we're so thankful that God brought you here to this moment. And I truly believe that. I think God orchestrated your life today to bring you here. I, I realize you may have made a conscious decision, and I, I'm totally not negating that at all, but I think the Lord directed your steps and your paths to here. So my prayer, my prayer is that today you encounter that Christ, that God, the one who died on the cross so that you could be set free. I hope you encounter him today. That's what this is all about. We want to lift high Jesus' name, and I pray that you will meet him today in this moment. So if you're a guest of ours, let us help you get connected to the life of the church. Let us help you get connected to this Savior, Jesus. You can do that by filling out a Connect card right in front of you. You can um, put that in the, uh, just, you can bring that to me in the back right after the service. I've got a gift for you. I'd love to give that to you. You can also text the word guest to 423-455-9458. And uh, you can do that digitally as well. So let's, let's take a moment. We, we pray every week here. We do that corporately. This is not just a transition moment, right, where I pray and then people move around. That might happen, but that's not what this is for. This is for you to join in with me. And we desperately need to pray for our nation. Would you do that with me today? Let's earnestly call out together, corporately, as the body of Christ, call out to Jesus that he would move and work in our nation today. Let's pray. Lord, we love you, and we love this country. Lord, we're so thankful you allow us the freedoms by living here that are afforded to us, that were bought with precious blood just as... You shed your blood to buy ultimate freedom for us. Lord, I pray that you would help us never to take that for granted, but you'd also help us, Lord, to desperately and earnestly pray that you will continue to bless America, but that America would also seek to bless you, God, and help us as your body, as your church, sojourners in this world. Help us, Lord, to raise high the banner of Christ so that you will draw men and women unto yourself. God, be with us. Be with our country. Help us.
to humble ourselves before you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you stand? We're going to continue singing to our Lord. We are thankful this morning that we get together in freedom here today and worship our Savior. So let's do that. Let's cry out to God. Let's worship Him together. I count on one thing. The same God that never fails will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God who's never late is working all things out. You're working all things out. Yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. Yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy. All That our God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let's sing that much again. I count on one thing. The same God that never fails will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God who's never late is working all things out. You're working all things out. Yeah. I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. Yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy all my days. Oh, yes, I will for all my days. Oh, yes, I will. I choose to pray. to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of all names, that nothing can stand against. I choose to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of all names, that nothing can stand against. Yes, I will sit you high in the lowest valley. Praise him now. Let's praise him. Let's praise him by clapping our hands. <laughs> he is good. He is good. What is our hope in life and death? Christ alone. Christ alone. What is our only confidence that our souls to Him belong? Who holds our days within His hands? What comes apart from His command? And what will keep us to the end? The love of Christ in which we stand. Oh, sing hallelujah, our hope springs eternal. Oh, sing hallelujah, now and ever we confess, Christ our hope in life and death.
What's truth? What truth can calm the troubled soul? God is good. God is good. Where is His grace and goodness known? In our great Redeemer's blood, who holds our faith when fears arise? What stands above the stormy trial? Who sends the waves that bring us nigh unto the shore, the rock of Christ? Sing hallelujah, our hope springs eternal. Oh, sing hallelujah, now and ever we confess Christ our hope in life and death. Unto the what will we see? Christ, he lives, Christ, he lives, and what reward will heaven bring? Everlasting life with him, then we will rise to be the Lord, then sin and death shall be Joy when Christ is ours forevermore. Oh, sing hallelujah, our hope springs eternal. Oh, sing hallelujah, now and ever we confess Christ our hope in God, we thank you that you are our hope in life and death, that we can look to you no matter what we face, and God, knowing that whatever we face, you can use it for your glory. We trust in that today. Thank you for how you love us, Lord. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen. You guys can be seated. looking at uh, several Proverbs as we are uh, on our family vacation, right? And we are been, we've been taking those. We've, we have enjoyed uh, vacations, or you're planning on enjoying one, I hope. And so with that, it just kind of makes sense. We're all taking our own family vacations. Let's look at what uh, wisdom there is for the road of life that the Lord has for us. What is the wisdom that we have to take us on our own Trip and this thing called life, and I'm reminded of uh, several trips where uh, I was driving a van with uh, a bunch of teenagers in various churches that I've been in. And uh, have y'all ever like when you're driving, especially in the summer, uh, uh, just a rain shower will pop up that's just like a monsoon, and you're driving, and you're like, you know, people are crazy when they drive in the rain, right? Because some people will just 
like you're on the interstate and they're just go. it's like nothing happened, right? And you can't even see in front of you like your windshield wipers don't go fast enough. You know what I'm talking about? Just nod your head if you know what I'm talking about so I don't feel like I'm the only one. All right, thank you. And so, you know, you're going like slow and then people have, do you put on your hazards? Do you not? I don't know the rule. I really don't know. I just know people do that. I don't know that's in the book. I can't remember, right? So it seems a little more confusing to me than just not having those on. But that's what happens, right? So it's debatable. And you're just hoping, could I get to where I could pull off? And you see the people, they're already taken up, right? By motorcycles or something like that. But they're underneath the overhang, right? The road that goes over. And if you didn't get to stop, you get that brief moment of respite, right? Where you're driving, and then all of a sudden, nothing. And then poof, right? It's back. And we, in times of trouble, in times of difficulty, we're looking for that covering, that place to keep us dry, to keep us safe. We um, went to Dollywood recently, and we were driving the little cars. You know those little cars? And Colt was driving me, right? And so we were having a lot of fun. It, it was sprinkling a little bit while we were driving, and that was okay. And then we got to a tunnel, and it was like, oh, this is so nice, a little kind of long tunnel. But by the time we got on the other side of it, and you, you can't control these cars, they just automatically go. So it's not like you can stop. All of a sudden, it just, the bottom falls out, and we're, we just started the ride. You got a long way to go. We came off of that thing soaking wet. I had to give Colt my hat, because he was like, you know, and so then I'm, you know, don't have a hat, so I'm soaking wet. That momentary respite was, was a godsend. We didn't even know how much. In life, when trouble comes, we look for a way out, a, a way of, of respite, a way of covering, a moment just to say, can I just get a break? And we know if we know our Bibles and we know if we have a relationship with Jesus that we have available to us in time of trouble, in time when it seems like everything is hitting us constantly, we have a place where we can find, we don't just seek refuge, but we find refuge from the storms of life. Amen? Today we're going to look at the wisdom from Proverbs 18, verse 10, and see where we can run a sure place not just a, a hopeful place or maybe place, but a sure place that you and I can find protection. Let's look at Proverbs 18, verse 10. Since it's so short, I'm going to let you stay seated. But you honor God's word by the reading of his word in this moment. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it. And are protected. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You and I see two things about protection available to those who trust in the Lord in this simple, short proverb. Number one, we see that the Lord's name is a place of refuge. The Lord's name. We sang his name today. We lauded the name of Christ. We held high the name of Christ. And because of that, you and I have refuge, protection. It's a place that we can run to all the time. So no doubt we've heard that the Lord is a place we can run to. Psalm 46, 1 through 3 helps us to see that God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. And other places in Scripture help us to see that as well. And God is a place where we can run. We can run to him in times of difficulty, in times of fear, in times of plenty, in times of wonder. He's a place that we can go to and find our strength, find our refuge, find our respite. But this verse is a little more nuanced. It says that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The name of the Lord. Here in this proverb, we see 
the, the proverb writer is helping the reader to see that God has a reputation for being a refuge. We've also heard that the power of the name of Jesus, that there is power in the name of the Lord, the power in the name of Jesus. I want to draw your attention to Philippians 2, 9 through 11. It says this, For this reason God highly exalted him, Jesus, and gave him the name that is above every other name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. So the name of Jesus is powerful. It clearly helps us to see that there is power in Jesus' name. Power to cause everyone who's ever lived, who ever will live, to one day bow at his feet. There's power in the name of Jesus. And here in this proverb, the proverb writer is helping his reader to see that God has a reputation for being a refuge. That's what that word means there. That word name means that he is known for this. It is his name that is a strong tower. He is a place of refuge, and that is the reputation that God has. Think about that. It is God's reputation. It is the thing he is known for for being trustworthy and able to protect in time of need. That's what he does. That's who he is. That is his character even. That's what wrapped up in the, the original language of this one word. It is his reputation. is what he's known for. It's his very character to be a strong tower, a place for protection, and a place for you and I to go to. Now, that is the reputation he had at this time. That is the reputation he has had for mo the most of human history. But something is happening and has happened in our day. I'm not saying it's like unique to our day, but it seems to be ramped up a little bit more where people are calling him to question the whether, whether God exists or not. And I would tell you, if you look at human history, our God has had a reputation for being real, number one, but also being loving and kind and able to save. Think about the people that the Israelites encountered along their way after they had been rescued out of Egypt. And word spread quicker to the people who lived in these various uh, tribes and clans and places, then sometimes the, the Israelites even realize. And I'm reminded particularly about when, when they had arrived to Jericho and the Lord had, was going to give them Jericho to take over. And you remember they encountered Rahab the harlot. And she said, we are terrified in your God. Your God has a reputation that he's going to protect you and we are terrified that we're here in this place. And so this one person believed more highly than the whole nation did, and God spared her and her family because of her faith and because she knew that God was who he said he was. She believed the reputation God had. If you are in a time of trouble today, friends, God's reputation is strength and power for the weak and needy. Won't you come to him today? Won't you come to him today? And like this verse says, don't walk, run. Run into his arms. He is a God who is trustworthy, and his reputation is power and might available to the humble, available to the meek, available to the ones who need it the most and recognize that. Would you come to Christ today? In our day, what reputation does the God of the Bible have? And I would say part of that reputation that, we, that I feel he sometimes has is a result 
of the people who bear his name. You see, you and I not only have a strong tower that you and I can run to, the reputation of our Savior, of our Lord, of our God, but you and I carry that banner. We carry his reputation to a lost and dying world. And so if the reputation of the, that God has amongst the world is one that he doesn't exist and that he's powerless and that, you know, who is he? Why is antiquated? Why would we believe these things? In part, it's because we, as the body of Christ, have misrepresented him. And my prayer is that you and I would bear his name with humility and truth and that you and I would give him a reputation with our lives. How are you representing Jesus today? The second thing that we see here about the protection we have in the storms of life and on this road called life is that the Lord's covering is a place of protection. So we said the Lord's name is a place of refuge. The Lord's covering is a place of protection. The proverb writer evokes the word righteousness. And he says it's the righteous who can find ultimate protection in the name of the Lord or in his reputation. But what does that word mean and who is the one who is righteous? And what makes a person righteous? Just like the name of the Lord is a covering for the troubled, the Lord provides a covering for any sinner who places their trust in him. This is called righteousness, and it is something alien to you and I. The righteousness that receives the Lord's protection is not anything you or I can drum up or muster up or do enough good at. In fact, Romans uh, 3.10 says that there is no one righteous. No, not one. Jesus, when encountered by the rich young ruler, he says, good teacher, what must I do to have eternal life? And Jesus says, why do you call me good? It wasn't because God or Jesus wasn't good. He was trying to help this man see that he wasn't just a teacher. He was God. He says, why do you call me good? No one is good except God. So you and I, as, as human beings, cannot muster up enough good in and of ourselves to be righteous. The, 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 the testimony of Scripture shows us that we are not righteous on our own, but you and I can have righteousness imputed or imparted on to us, and you and I can display righteousness, thus finding protection. So how do we do that? How do we find this covering? I think uh, we see the whole of Scripture teaches this. Number one, Isaiah 61.10 states this. It gives us a picture of what was to come. It says, I, rejo I rejoice greatly in the Lord. I exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation and wrapped me in a robe of righteousness. As a groom wears a turban, as a bride adorns herself with jewels. It's pointing to the righteousness that you and I would have imparted to us or imputed to us because of what Christ has done. That is something, not something within us, innate inside of us, but it's something that can be imbued or placed upon us. You, cannot, you and I can have a covering similar to what happened in the garden with Adam and Eve. Think about it. They, uh, the, G, uh, God comes down in the cool of the day to have his normal little, little walk and talk with Adam and Eve, right? And they're hiding. Why? Because they've realized they're naked. They, they've realized they are vulnerable. They realized who they are and their need. He says, we can't come out. We don't have any clothes on, right? And uh, we talked about the DST last week, right? The Derek Standard Translation or D Derek Simple Translation. So in that translation, Adam says, we're naked, so we can't be coming out, right? So not naked, naked, all right? And God provided a covering for them to hide their shamefulness, right? 
It's a picture of what was to come. It's a, a shadow of what was to come, that the righteousness of Christ would cover you and I and make us right in the eyes of God, that it would be imparted to us. And in Philippians 3, 9, we read that we can be found in him not having a righteousness of my own from the law, but one that is through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. So not only do we have a covering and protection for ourselves for the trouble we face today, but through Christ we have eternal protection, eternal covering, a place that you and I could run to to find eternal salvation. Can I just say for a moment, we, we've, we've stated, you know, how thankful we are for our freedoms. And man, I, I am. You know, I, I even got a dollar uh, tie that has stars on it today. I love the freedom that we have in this nation. I love this nation. You want to get me to cry? You know those videos where the veterans come home and surprise their family members? I will cry on the middle of the floor curled up in a ball. I love, I love them and hate them at the same time. Because, but if you need a good cry, that's it. I love our country, and I'm so thankful for the sacrifices that people have made. But our country is not a substitute for the protection and the safe haven that can only be found in Jesus. We know that, right? We understand that, right? I'm thankful for our democratic process, I, as messy as it can be. I'm thankful for the, the balance of power right now. I'm very thankful for that because you, it, the, the government is crazy. I'm thankful that we have a Supreme Court that is protecting our religious freedoms. I'm so thankful for that. But I cannot place my hope in those things. Those things will fail us. They failed us before. They'll fail us again. But Jesus Christ is sure, strong, and is far above those things. One day all this world will pass away, but his kingdom will remain. And will we have found our, 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 our strength, the power? Will we have found our respite and our rescue and our refuge in his arms? I beg you today, friends, find your hope in Christ. He covers our sins and gives us righteousness, the great unexplainable exchange. Isn't that, isn't that an amazing exchange? Hey, here's my sin, Jesus. Okay, you get righteousness. It don't make sense, but it's true. All we bring to him is our sinfulness. All we bring to him is our guilt. All we bring to him is our shame. And he says, I'll give you my righteousness. Will you believe in him today? Will you trust him for the forgiveness of your sins today that by faith in him, you'll be clothed in his righteousness? In just a moment, we're going to take the Lord's Supper. But I don't want to miss this. I want to give you an opportunity. It's a little bit different than what we do normally. Jesus is a place the righteous run to and are protected. That's what this proverb says. Friends, if you need the eternal protection of Jesus Christ, that it can only be bought, it was only bought by his blood, would you run to him today? I would just give an opportunity at this moment, right in the middle of my message, if you would trust in Jesus Christ today, would turn from your sin, turn from your selfishness, turn from your own way, and repent and turn to Jesus alone. Would you run to him today? Would you run into the loving arms of Christ that were nail-pierced for you? Would you come to Jesus today? I believe that maybe there's someone here today that needs to trust in Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. Would you do that today? You can do it right where you sit. You can pray a prayer that is so simple, but you have to mean it with all your heart. It would sound something like this. Would everyone bow their hearts, bow their eyes, and bow their heads? And if that's you, if you want to trust Jesus Christ today, would you say these words in your own way and mean them with all your heart? Jesus, 
I've placed my hope in too many things that will one day fail me. But I know now that you are, you have the reputation of salvation, you have the reputation of forgiveness, and you have the reputation of being a place that I can run to. Help me run to you today and be saved. If you said a prayer like that today, I want to encourage you, I want to pray for you, I just want to encourage you to take the next step of obedience. And so, if that is you, would you come see me afterwards? Just come and say, I prayed the prayer. I need, I, I, Jesus saved me today. I'd love to know that. I'd love to pray for you. I'd love to encourage you. If that's you, would you do that? Lord, we are thankful. We pray that you continue moving in this moment as we take of the Lord's elements. It's in Jesus' name I pray. So I want to draw a connection here and it's not difficult to do because we talked about Jesus being the strong tower that we can run to and the reason he is that is because he bought our righteousness with his own blood. The Bible says that helps us to see that the blood covers us and buys our righteousness. It gives us that right to say, no, I'm not righteous because I can't be, but Jesus' righteousness is what God looks on and sees. It's because he died. It's because he was, his body was broken, his blood was spilled, and it's because he went to a grave and stayed there only three days and rose again and defeated all those things on your behalf. And so today, we get to take a moment to remind ourselves of his sacrifice through the, through the communion. First Corinthians actually says that we commune with his death. We commune with his body. We commune with the blood that was spilled. And so today, we're going to do something we do once a month here. But I pray that it would be fresh for you. You want to know how you can respond today? To take the bread, the juice, and to remember what Christ has done for you. He's loved you. He loved you. He died for you. And he's a refuge you can run to. At this time, our deacons are going to come to serve the Lord's Supper. We do uh, one pass Lord's Supper here. So you get two cups together. It's got the bread on the bottom, juice on the top. And I'll guide you and lead you. We do allow anyone who knows Jesus Christ as your Savior, you've been bought by the precious blood of Jesus, you can take the Lord's Supper today, but I do pray because there's a, a dire warning in Scripture. Don't take it uh, in an unworthy manner. And one of the ways you can do that is to take it not knowing Jesus Christ as your Savior. The second way is if you have sin um, or an un, unconfessed sin or an unconfessed issue with your brother or sister in Christ. So if you have an unconfessed sin, confess that before the Lord as we pass these out and get your heart in the right place. If you have something against your brother or know someone, or brother or sister, or they have something against you, I would encourage you because Scripture encourages us. Maybe just pause and not do that this week until you can get that handled, and we'll do that the next time. We encourage you. As you remember the blood that was spilled, the body of Jesus that was broken for you, that you remember his sacrifice, that he bought your righteousness. You may be seated for just a moment.
So carefully pull that last one out so you don't spill the juice. Uh, we're going to take the bread first. And we're reminded this is a representation that we do to remind ourselves of what the representation of what Christ and his disciples did every day of their lives or every year of their lives to remind themselves of the Passover that happened and the, 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 the firstborn of every family being passed over. It was a shadow. It was a representation to point us forward. And so when Jesus was in the upper room with his disciples, he said, we take this bread. He helped them to see that the thing that they had been taking their entire life represented him and what he was about to do what we look back and remember what he did that Jesus went to the cruel cross the cross of punishment for a sinner reserved for a sinner a man with no sin the only one who was righteous went to the cross and gave his body for me gave his body to be broken for you so when we remember this, it is no small task. We take this little stale little cracker and it should remind us that the body of Christ was broken for you and I. He was put on a cross for you and I. He died for you and me. So let's remember that today as we take and eat. Jesus also took the cup that they were used to and he reminded them that this cup that represented the blood, they knew it represented blood. He said it represents my blood I'm about to spill to offer a new covenant with you, a new promise, a new commitment through his blood. The cup often also refers to to wrath you've heard that the cup of wrath being poured out right so the cup is something jesus said he even said in the garden if there's any other way let this cup pass from me what he's speaking about the cup of wrath for sin that he was about to bear himself and take for you and me that's my sin that's your sin and so the wrath of god was poured out on christ his blood was spilled to remind us that he went to the ultimate length to show you he loves you and he bought a new covenant for you and me. So as we remember those things, as we drink, let us remember the cup Jesus bore for you and I. We all have a moment to respond. The disciples responded in the upper room by singing a song. We're going to do that as well. But I pray that if you need to do business with God, let that be this as well. Don't just sit there and wait for the end of the service, but take time to do business with what God is calling you to do, to be obedient to Him however He's leading you in this moment. Would you stand? We're going to sing and worship our Savior. make this a prayer today that we say that God is all that we want and may we draw near to him. Amen. Let's sing these words together. Draw me close to you. Never let me go. I lay it all down again To hear you say that I'm your friend You are my desire No one else will do nothing else could take your place 
to feel the warmth of your embrace. Help me find the way, bring me back to you. God be near to us this week. Amen? Amen. We celebrate that. We thank, we're thankful for what he has done for us at the cross, and we celebrate it as we go throughout the week. We want to encourage you to continue to worship today through giving. On your way out, there's spots here in the room that you can do that. Uh, in the back, there's, they say giving on the side of those boxes. You can give there, or you can text any dollar amount to the number 84321. Or if you're joining us online, or even here in the room, if you want to on your phone, you can go to lafayettefirst.life slash give and give those ways. Those are important ways for us to show God that we are thankful for all that he does in us and through us. Two reminders. Uh, enjoy the 4th of July tomorrow. I know that the vast majority of us in this room are off. Take the time to be off tomorrow and enjoy the freedom of not having to do anything, right? It's fun. Enjoy that. Thank God for that. Um, but also remember and be thankful for the fact that we can gather in freedom. Amen? That there was no fear of what we were doing in this room this morning. That we live in a country where we get to do that, and that's an incredible thing. So go this week, take the name of Jesus with you, and impact the world for the gospel. You are sent out into the world. Have a great week.